Good morning again, everybody, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us for a session that will provide an overview of the OER funding opportunities that we have available across our state system of higher education in Oklahoma, and also a couple of these that are available to private institutions, potentially, uh, knowing that we do have a couple of those members on the audience. Uh, I will tell you all that there will be a lot of links shared in the chat here. Uh, we will not do a PowerPoint presentation for this because I'm going to show you things that are mostly available to you to view on the internet. Uh, but I also do welcome you to type any questions or raise your hand you know, if you need to ask anything along the way, because uh, I want to make sure that this is clear for everybody to understand what these two funding opportunities are that are available and how you and your faculty can take advantage of these and actually access them. So. Uh, Going to go ahead and start with some screen sharing here. And <clears throat> the first thing that I wanted to show you all this morning is actually where you can find this information on our website. The link I just dropped for you in the chat goes to OCOLearnOK.org. Uh, if you attended the last session for our keynote, you'll know that this is the Online Consortium of Oklahoma's website. And OCO, together with our Council for Online Learning Excellence, are largely responsible for shepherding these OER initiatives across the state. So any projects or initiatives that we undertake through COLE and OCO more than likely will end up having a home on this website. OER is such a priority for us that you will usually notice one of our homepage features includes a notice about OER. So we have the OER Summit registration link there, as well as this new tile that's just popped up as of October 12th for the OER training and open textbook grant opportunities for academic year 22 and 23. I will, for just the sake of mentioning it, let you know that you can also find this information linked from our Open Educational Resources webpage, which is found under the priorities menu. So two places really ultimately, more than that actually, where you can find this announcement and kind of information about the grant opportunities. But I anticipate uh, with complete honesty that we will leave this one as a priority on our homepage for the duration of the year. So if you have an opportunity and you're following along, feel free to click into that post that you see from the homepage. And this really is the best place that you can come for the entry portal for these two opportunities that we're going to discuss here today. Uh, the first one that I'd like to take on with you all is actually the OER 101 Training Completion Grants. Uh, these in information that, again, we're going to share with you all, that's actually located all on one blog post there. So we'll go over the first part together, answer any questions about OER 101, and then get to the textbook of uh, development and adoption grants. Another link that's coming your direction within the chat right now goes to a PDF flyer that you are welcome to print off, email, and share in any other means that you would like with your colleagues across campus. So through the Open uh, Council for Online Learning Excellence, our Open Educational Resources Subcommittee created an online training program called Open Educational Resources Basics and Beyond. This is a two-part training program that, again, is completely self-paced and online-based that faculty and staff across our system and beyond are welcome to complete at no cost. For this training award that we are offering with funding from the state regents, Faculty and staff that work in a curriculum development or support role, so that could include individuals such as instructional designers, instructional technologists, librarians, teaching and learning specialists, you know, those other individuals, again, that work with faculty on curricular matters in their course are eligible to apply for this funding opportunity. Uh, one of the things that I do want to stress for this particular funding is that this amount, the $50 award available through the state regents, is dispersed individually to faculty at their institutions. So the state regents would not award directly to faculty, but we issue a grant to the institution and then they award those funds to the faculty directly uh, due to conflict of interest laws related to Oklahoma. So for the completion, again, just of the first half of the OER Basics and Beyond course, which is called OER 101, once faculty get through that experience or the staff member gets through that experience, they will hear from us with a notice that they're eligible to apply for these funds. So 
any individual that's on this call, you are welcome to complete the OER 101 training, regardless whether you're at a public institution in our state, a private institution in our state, or outside of Oklahoma, you can complete this training at no cost and receive a digital badge. But it is only for those faculty and staff employed at an Oklahoma public college or university that we're able to make these funds eligible for application. Make sure I'm getting my chat here. All right. Just to give you a quick preview, uh, this that you're seeing on the screen is actually the digital badge that an individual is issued upon completion of the OER 101 training. Just in case you want an opportunity to play around with a digital badge, I went ahead and dropped the link in the chat for you there. So we have also used this opportunity um, when faculty earn this badge and share it through their networks to get other individuals exposure to this course. So this badge actually contains a link to the OER 101 module, and it contains a link to the OER 101 quiz, which I'll give you a preview of here shortly uh, to tell individuals exactly what it is that they need to do to earn that badge and also get easy access to those resources directly linked there. So uh, if you have earned the OER 101 badge, I would strongly appreciate your sharing of it, you know, through LinkedIn, your email signature, or other platforms that have a digital capacity there so that we can spread the word about this awesome training that is available. As previously mentioned, the OER 101 training ultimately sits within the Open Educational Resources Basics and Beyond book. This book is openly licensed, open access, and available for you all without any kind of a login. And you don't have to complete the training course if you're interested in just learning more about OER and figuring out kind of what this world is all about there. But ultimately, as faculty review this OER 101 section, and again, I keep saying faculty, I want to make sure I include our staff colleagues there as well. Uh, but they get a basic understanding of OER. They get an understanding of why they should consider using OER or promoting it on their campus. They have a basic understanding of open licensing through Creative Commons. And they also get training on how to find and evaluate the open educational resources that they may want to consider using in their course. So those five simple sub-modules that they go through with the part one, followed by completion of a very simple assessment, is all that is required to be eligible for the $50 award through the state regents. There is a companion course associated with OER Basics and Beyond. And again, what I like about this is that it actually gives your faculty and staff as they go through that training experience and use an OER textbook through OER and Basics and Beyond, an idea of how they could integrate it into their course. So much as they would do if they adopt an OER for their own class, they'll see that actually in practice here with what our committee has built out for the professional development experience. The quiz is actually very simple that individuals have to complete as far as what it's assessing concerning the knowledge of open education. So very simply, a faculty member has to provide us with their first and last name, the institution or affiliation uh, agency that they're part of. We're also asking about titles and roles, uh, really more so just kind of being able to make sure that those individuals qualify for the grant, but also it's helping us to understand what kind of roles are interacting with OER across our campuses. We are also asking individuals for discipline area so that as we have faculty completing these quiz opportunities, we actually do have opportunities to connect faculty with other individuals teaching in their same discipline area for potential project collaborations. For module one, the understanding of OER, faculty are asked to provide a basic overview of the five R's and which one they feel may be most compelling for them and their personal use of OER in their course. Module two asks the individuals to reflect upon their why for OER. So whether it's reducing textbook costs, increasing engagement in their courses, more freedom and control over the learning content, open pedagogy, increasing DEI. There are a multitude of reasons. And again, we feel that it's very important for our faculty and staff to identify that uh, as part of their learning and development here. We ask them also to apply an attribution. So they have to go out to the web 
find an openly licensed material and provide the proper attribution for that particular piece of content, which again, tests their ability to understand the world of open licensing and the information they encounter so that they can choose or understand, can I use this in the way that I want or are there attributions or restrictions on this that I would not be able to use it in the way that I intend? Module four asks individuals information about how to find OER. So do we require them to actually go out and find a piece of open educational resource on the internet? We ask them to use a tool, whether it's the one that we provide or one of their own to evaluate the content. Uh, and then we also ask them to do a bit of a meta evaluation of our own training program so that we can get continuous feedback for this and make changes over time. So once again, it's very simple, five sections on here, one that covers each of those modules. And what's best about this is that the individuals completing this quiz get customized feedback on an individual basis. So it is not something where they get canned responses. There is actually somebody on our end, as well as volunteers from our Open Educational Resources Committee, who is providing the kind of substantive feedback that helps our faculty out there. So again, what ultimately happens as far as the workflow, if a faculty member from an Oklahoma public college or university that either again is teaching a course or somebody that works with faculty on curricular developments successfully completes this quiz, we will notify them that they are eligible to apply for the grant funding opportunity. The way that this actually happens, uh, the form that your faculty and staff colleagues will receive is this one that I'm displaying on the screen right here. So this is a very simple document that ultimately just describes what the faculty member has done, which is completing the OER 101 training, and the fact that they are eligible to accept a $50 award from the state regents, which will be dispersed to them through their institution. So uh, again, kind of some contract language on here that is required for us to be able to disperse these kinds of funds. But ultimately, again, it is the successful completion of that OER 101 training uh, and receiving this MOU and signing it by the faculty member, as well as the chief academic officer or designee who has the authority to accept those funds from us. Uh, that, that's very simply it uh, for the requirement of those. So generally, uh, I would say we're processing the funding transfers for these about once every other week right now uh, to accommodate the flow of them that are coming in. Uh, we can increase that as needed, uh, but there are still plenty of opportunities for your faculty and staff colleagues to take advantage of the 90 total awards that we have available. So again, just to clarify, 90 total awards are available for the OER 101 completion that are funded. After that, Anybody can take this uh, training program, anybody can earn the digital badge, but we would not be able to issue further funds unless this is renewed next year. I'm going to take a brief moment to pause here and see if there are any questions anybody has regarding the OER 101 training, uh, the grant funding that is available, the process of how those funds are distributed to your institution uh, or otherwise before we move on to the open textbook grants. And I'm seeing a couple of questions here in the chat I'll go ahead and address uh, from Carl. He thinks he earned his badge at his former institution. How can he check? Uh, you no longer have access to the email from that institution. Carl, you are welcome to go ahead and send us an email if you would like to online at osrhe.edu. And we can go in and actually check that information. And apologies, Kathy, I'm gonna, I did give everybody just now the permission to unmute if you have any questions you'd like to share aloud. So, okay, this is Kathy, and I do have a question, but um, also it would not be odd if I'd come in and left myself unmuted and made a lot of noise. But um, once the funds are exhausted, because hopefully 90 people will do that today, um, would it be appropriate if we have funding at our own institution to offer financial incentive to get the Regents branding? Absolutely, Kathy. Yes, we we would be more than happy to sponsor, uh, you know, and provide the OER 101 badge to your faculty as much as we possibly can. And if there's incentive available for them, and OSU or another institution would like to recognize that and fund it, we we would happily support that and appreciate it. Okay, outstanding. So you'll kind of maybe keep us posted on 
what time today everyone has earned all those maybe i sure Hopefully will let us okay. and i think as of today we've had uh and uh, tracy can also check me on this but the last time i checked we had about 15 or fewer that had uh completed and had been sent the mou document so uh just because we send it doesn't mean that we'll get the formal application there but we do have a number of them that are that are circulating All right. <clears throat> so transitioning to the next funding opportunity that we're here to discuss today, get back to the screen share, and I'm going to drop a link again into the chat for you that has a copy of this flyer you're seeing. So through, if you attended the last session, you're aware that the state regents have allocated a total of $300,000 for open educational resource initiatives for our system for fiscal year 23, which is this year's budget. Uh, with the funding opportunity that we now have available, we have set aside particularly $235,000 of that 300 to dedicate towards open textbook project grants for our faculty that are teaching across the state. Uh, once again, as far as the eligibility for these grants go that I'm talking about, particularly on the screen here, these are tailored towards those individuals teaching at Oklahoma public colleges and universities. The one caveat that I want to put out there, particularly if you're from a private institution, is that we have another source of grant funds available through our online consortium of Oklahoma that mirrors the structure of the grants that you're seeing here that we will talk about shortly and is available to private institutions. So again, if you're teaching at Oklahoma Christian University, University of Tulsa, one of the tribal colleges, uh, other private educational institutions, if you become a member of our online consortium of Oklahoma, through those dues, your faculty and staff have an opportunity to take advantage of grant opportunities like this through other funds that we have set aside there. So just again, if you have any questions about that or OCO membership, please feel free to drop a note in the chat or send us an email to online at osrhe.edu and I would be happy to get with you and visit about that. So covering the different types of project grants that are available, uh, we actually have four levels of grants uh, to offer today. The first level ultimately is the easiest opportunity out there available for faculty, and that is adopting a whole resource that's already been produced with minimal or no modification on the part of the faculty that is bringing it into their course. So again, this funds the adoption of an existing open educational textbook on OpenOCO or another platform with a Creative Commons license for $500. The second level of grant opportunity available is for faculty who do not want to fully author the content of their book, but they realize that they need to incorporate more than two resources in order to make the book meet the learning outcomes of the course that they have set. So because the nature of this work requires that element of curation and arrangement of the learning materials by faculty, either in a platform like Pressbooks or elsewhere, it's $1,000 for that amount. So again, there's no expectation that anybody's going to fully author, uh, that they're actually going to draft content you know, on a chapter by chapter basis, but there may need to be some revisions made to those existing texts, such as I did in the project that I took on for statistics, combining it with Excel, to make sure that the experience flows for your students and that it's seamlessly integrated with what it is that you're designing for your course. And thank you, Carl, for pointing out that typo. I always do that. It's osrhe.edu. <laughs> so the level three grant, which I think is probably going to be uh, the furthest reach for many of our faculty colleagues, is a fully authored grant. So in the amount of $2,500, we're able to award funding for faculty who wish to actually create their own open textbook from scratch and apply a Creative Commons license to it. So that other individuals, whether that be faculty across our own state or individuals across the globe, can take that original content, use the Creative Commons attributions on it and revise it to meet their own needs, which again is what this world of open is really all about. So again, the highest level of work there ultimately because a faculty has to construct or develop those materials from scratch for the entire course 
uh, for $2,500. The fourth level of grant that we have available can either be combined with one of these other three types that I've just mentioned, or is available as a standalone grant opportunity for faculty that are already using an open educational resource textbook in their class. And that is the level four grant for ancillary materials. If you were on the last session, you heard me talk a little bit about the gap that we're trying to fill between what publishers are able to offer for faculty, but comes at a very steep price. And a very large component of that is these ancillary materials, which include homework assignments, as well as assessment packages that can be delivered to students, uh, either in the form of a quiz or other authentic assessments that are designed for the OER. So for $500, there is a grant type that's available, once again, either as an add-on or a standalone, that will help a faculty or ask them to develop a package of ancillary materials for a specific OER textbook that's out there, or again, with the one that they're developing as part of this grant project. So maximum amount that a faculty member could get, $3,000. If they do a $2,500 fully authored project and the $500 ancillary materials, uh, the lowest level of grant funding they could get is just the $500 for the standalone. But once again, I think really where we may hit that sweet spot for faculty is that $500 level one grant for the whole adoption, but also adding on that ancillary materials grant to really enable the customization and fleshing out you know, of those ancillary materials packages, which again, uh, as far as my observations go, seem to be one of the bigger gaps in the world of OER. So if you scroll down a little bit further on the flyer, uh, which once again, make sure I share that with you all. Yes, uh, we have some priorities that are associated with this particular pot of funding here from the state regions for fiscal year 23. The top priority is that the course is transferable and specifically listed on our course equivalency project matrix. Course Equivalency Project, just for those of you that may not know this, is an annual meeting of faculty groups by discipline area where they gather and talk about course by course and certify learning objectives in agreement at the state. So if a course is listed on the Course Equivalency Project matrix, it's guaranteed that if a student takes it, it will transfer to the other courses or institutions, I should say, that have guaranteed the acceptance of it from the matrix. So they bought into the matrix. So naturally, to increase the biggest footprint that we can with these projects, transferable courses is what we're looking for. The other competitive preference priorities where we will have to rank projects if we get a large number of submissions uh, is for high enrollment and general education courses, those that are part of a program that support a critical occupation area, as well as those that address underrepresented or underserved populations. I do want to stress, though, the first line that you see there, that these fiscal year funds for 23 and the amount of 235000 are available on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you are interested in this opportunity, don't let that list of competitive preference priorities prohibit you from applying towards the grants. We still have plenty of funding out there right now to where we could get some projects uh, that individuals may uh, not think, you know, perhaps that I can have the biggest footprint here. It's not always at the end of the day having 100 students in a section that's going to want to make us fund a project. It's can we make learning outcomes improved here? You know, can we reduce costs? That's certainly one of the things, but uh, it, it always goes well beyond that, which I think also connotes with those competitive preference priorities. Rod, there's a there's a question in the chat. Thank you, Tracy. Let's see here. So Tara asked, how would the grant work if a whole group of faculty were working to adopt an OER textbook and developing ancillary materials? Uh, and Tara, I actually am going to address that whenever we get to the memorandum of understanding for this one. We do allow for multi-faculty collaborations uh, on these open textbook grants. So if you're working on a course with a couple of colleagues or even one other colleague in your own department or at another institution, because we also do appreciate that, you actually do have the opportunity to share those grant funds. Uh, and I will say we ask faculty that do opt into that kind of a collaboration grant to tell us how they want the funds to be split. So if you're taking the lead on it and it's kind of a 75-25% arrangement on workload, we can tailor that to the agreement of what's made between you and your colleague. Uh, but yes, we have built in that element for author collaborators to work together on projects, uh, also recognizing that there can be real value. You know, if you have multiple hands in this uh, contributing towards that project, uh, that, that can be a great thing, especially for timeliness. 
And Sarah asked another question here. Is this only for using or creating resources in the OCO catalog? If someone used an OER from a different catalog, would they be able to get this grant? And Sarah, yes, you absolutely can either use the Open OCO Pressbooks platform or have your OERs hosted on another platform, such as LibreText, Lumen Learning, Manifold, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, for example, I will another one I will add, OpenStax. Uh, you know, they're one of the biggest proponents out there of open textbooks and have a large repository of openly licensed content. So any of our faculty could use that $500 award and pull one of the texts from OpenStax uh, and use that as, in order to suffice that. So no, these grant funds right here are not specific to the Pressbooks platform, but Pressbooks is available as a resource for any faculty that want to use it uh, for the sake of these projects. Great questions. Thank you so much for asking. So a little bit further down uh, within our flyer, which once again, you have my full permission to share this out across your entire campus. Uh, that would be wonderful if we got a large number of submissions here, but it's really a five step process uh, from start to finish for faculty to take advantage of this funding opportunity. The very first step that they have to take in order to apply for this is submitting a proposal interest form to us at the state regents, which I'm gonna scroll over to right now and review with everybody. So in order for a faculty to even kind of get in the pipeline for these grants, the very first thing that they will do is have a consultation meeting with us at the state regents. And by us, I actually mean either myself as the director of online learning, Tracy Romano, who's our manager of academic workforce and online learning, or Brittany Blake, who's our coordinator for academic affairs special projects. So all of your faculty that are receiving these grants or applying for them will have had at least one meeting with our team to discuss their project. In order to initiate that consultation request, this is the form that they actually fill out. So they provide us with email, their name, institution, their .edu email address, uh, the course that they are teaching or wanting to adopt for OER. We also ask them if they're teaching concurrent enrollment or high school students, how many students their project would impact in an academic year. Uh, and again, they can estimate because not everybody knows what enrollment's going to be in their sections. Uh, they also have to provide the total cost of materials currently incurred by students in their course, uh, which again, if it's zero dollars, we are still evaluating those proposals. Uh, it does not have to be a course that is using a four cost book right now uh, to be able to be eligible for these grants, although those are the ones that we're really trying to prioritize, of course. We have a checkbox list here, and again, they can check multiple uh, if they're not really sure which grant type they're interested at the time that they talk to us. We are also asking them if they're interested in using the Pressbooks platform to develop their project. Uh, we're asking them the year in which they hope to implement the OER project as well as the semester. Uh, and going back to the question we had earlier, do you plan to collaborate with faculty from another Oklahoma college or university? Uh, so again, yes, that would be the answer there if you uh, are hoping to do that. And then we do ask the faculty as well to give us some preliminary availability on their schedule so that we can send them some times that we are available to meet with them and ultimately set up that consultation together. Uh, they also have an opportunity on the interest form here to share with us if they have any questions or concerns, uh, other things that they might like to address, you know, concerning the OER process. So. What happens during the meeting whenever we actually get together with the faculty is we visit with them about their course and ask them, you know, what is your why for wanting to take on this project? We do a little bit of preliminary searching with them to help them understand and discover some of the resources available for their area. Uh, we answer any questions that they have concerning, you know, what is my obligation as far as developing the book, using it in a class, providing a report on the impact, uh, copyright and Creative Commons licensing, accessibility, you know, all those other things that need to be looped in uh, to a conversation about OER. And then ultimately, we send them an email that has a copy of the MOU attached. So it is not until the faculty returns the MOU document to us, which I'll go over here in a minute with you, with the signature of their academic officer or designee that we consider a formal application for the grant funds. So it is really a uh, 
no commitment conversation that faculty have if they submit the interest form. If they decide after the conversation, this is way more than I want to take on. I don't have the capacity right now to do this. We're not going to be uh, barking up their tree, you know, or saying, why haven't you given us the MOU? Uh, it really, the onus is on them at the end of the day to decide this is something they want to do and that they want to move the request form forward to their academic officer for approval. So once we receive the MOU document back from the institution, uh, which give me one moment and I'll scroll over to give you a preview of this. It really just has some of the same information that we accepted from them on the interest form. So they have to identify the course, uh, you know, where the OER book is being used. We do require some additional information from the institution. Uh, and again, I want to clarify that anytime the state regents are issuing a grant to a faculty member, the grant is issued to the institution who then must disperse the funds individually to that faculty. The state regents do not have the capacity or authority to be able to pay faculty on an individual basis uh, because they are employed by one of our constituent institutions. So uh, we do require, again, the buy-in from the academic affairs leadership so that there are aware that the project is going on, that there will be funds coming to the institution, and that this is what they're ultimately designated for. Um, once again, just some of the terms are outlined, such as what our priorities are, the types of funding that are available, uh, definitions of OER and Creative Commons licensing. There is the space where you can identify your author collaborators, which again, can either be at your same institution or another one, uh, if you're interested in working with someone elsewhere. Uh, we'll identify the project type and funding. Uh, so again, that's contingent upon the type of project that you're actually taking on. And then ultimately, what's required of faculty after they sign this, they have their academic officer sign this, is that they have to complete their project and use their OER in one course offering. So just one simple course offering, that could be an eight-week course, uh, short course, but has to be used one time in order for them to actually close out their requirements for the grant. So um, once again, when the faculty member completes this and the academic officer signs this, I will be the final signature that's on here uh, to ultimately certify that the grant's been awarded. So as previously mentioned, pardon my screen share scrolling here. On the second side of the flyer here, you'll notice that we do offer Pressbooks as a resource for these projects, but I do want to stress once more that Pressbooks is not a required tool for this particular pot of grant funding. Uh, we do have some grants that are specific to Pressbooks and available to those OCO member institutions. Uh, that's where, again, if you're a private institution, you could have an opportunity to take advantage of some of the grants. Um, but again, Pressbooks is available for all of the faculty that will be receiving any of these funds to be able to take, again, the OER content into the Pressbooks platform have ownership of it or retain it within the platform and be able to remix and revise it over time as much as needed. All right. Well, everybody, uh, I hate to say it, but that is actually pretty much the summary of the information that I wanted to cover as far as these OER grant funds go. So everybody should have an opportunity right now, if there are any questions, to either start your video or unmute. And I will also hang on in the chat here for a little bit longer and take any questions that may come to mind. Uh, but otherwise, if you feel like you have most of the information you need, you are welcome to go ahead and sign away. Hi, Brad. Um, hey, I'm in I'm in the library at uh, UCO. Uh, yeah. I'm in charge of the library's makerspace. Great. And I was interested in doing something like this uh, to create an OER to teach students kind of the basics of 3d modeling mm -hmm. so that they would be able to pre, pre prepare models for our 3d printers this would unlike this would be unlikely to end up in a course it would be um you know something we would do as um uh, uh, like a workshop or something like that uh, so would this still be something that would be eligible for the program or would it have to be tied to a course at some point 
it would have to be tied to a course Carl in order to be eligible for the funded part of the project. But having said that, if the Pressbooks platform might be of service to you in developing this kind of a text as a resource, that remains available to you and you could sign in and actually start developing that as soon as you're ready. Uh, and yeah, Brittany, <laughs> Brittany actually private messaged me here that that sounds like a really good idea for a micro credential, Carl, <laughs> for the 3D printing training. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's definitely something I'm thinking in terms yeah. of. So. No, that's a, that's a great idea. And again, I, I think that's kind of the cool thing about this whole Pressbooks platform and open education, you know, is that uh, we do have the tools out there at least to be able to create something like that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So I have a very similar question. We are transitioning our academic integrity tutorials to Pressbooks. Mm -hmm. We specifically do not teach them like that class in the library, but they are used in our Tiger Connect like introduction course for every semester. So could we still apply for that? Shauna, unfortunately, I don't think that one would fit kind of the mold for the grants because it wouldn't be considered a primary instructional text for the course. So students that are in those classes may still be expected to buy a textbook, um, you know, for the primary content of the course. Uh, right. But again, kind of the same response to Carl, we could absolutely provide the Pressbooks tool to you as a resource um, right. to do that. I think that's a wonderful thing that you all are taking on there. That's great. Thank, Thank you, you for the question. All right. Well, if there aren't any further questions, the last thing that I will leave you with is that if you go and visit the Zoom lobby and click on this session, you will find PDF copies there that you can download of those two flyers that I shared. And once again, you can also go to the OCOLearnOK.org website and pull those. But uh, that's my real request of you all, if you're on this call, to please start sharing that information out with your faculty because the more word that we get out about there, the more likely it is we're going to get to spend all of these 230 5,000 and really move the envelope for students, you know, that are taking our courses on textbook cost. All right. Well, thank you all so much again for being here today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon and we'll also come back at one o'clock to join us for our afternoon series of sessions. Uh, I actually get the pleasure today of going down to update our Board of Regents on the work that we've been doing with online education and OER. So uh, it's really going to be a good opportunity to share some of this exciting news that we've been talking about today. So thank you all so much again and have a great rest of your day.